Hi there, Mirella Mack here, and welcome to the Proverbs Challenge, where we read a chapter a day from the book of Proverbs. Today, we'll be reading chapter 25. So please do get your Bibles, your journals and notebooks out, and we can begin. As is our custom, we do not start off reading without inviting God. Like, how do you read the Word of God without inviting God to guide us? Now, let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you so much for this moment. I thank you for everybody that is tuned in and listening. Lord, as they listen, may they be blessed. As they read your word, may you cover them. Lord, I pray that the verses that I'm going to be sharing help them see you in a different light. I pray that they, they sow deep, deep into their hearts and grow deep roots and shoot upwards. Oh Lord, we pray that as we are growing closer to you, we will bear the fruit to represent you well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's begin our reading. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Then later on, as we do our deep dive, we'll make a comparison using the Amplified Version. Proverbs chapter 25, the New Living Translation. More Proverbs of Solomon. These are more Proverbs of Solomon, collected by the advisors of King Hezekiah of Judah. It is God's privilege to conceal things and the king's privilege to discover them. No one can comprehend the height of heaven, the depth of the earth, or all that goes on in the king's mind. Remove the impurities from silver, and the sterling will be ready for the silversmith. Remove the wicked from the king's court, and his reign will be made secure by justice. Don't demand an audience with the king or push for a place among the great. It's better to wait for an invitation to the head table than to be sent away in public disgrace. Just because you've seen something, don't be in a hurry to go to court. For what will you do in the end if your neighbor deals you a shameful defeat? When arguing with your neighbor, don't betray another person's secret. Others may accuse you of gossip and you'll never regain your good reputation. Timely advice is lovely, like golden apples in a silver basket. To one who listens, Valid criticism is like a gold earring or the other gold jewelry. Trustworthy messengers refresh like snow in summer. They revive the spirit of their employer. A person who promises a gift but doesn't give it is like clouds and wind that bring no rain. Patience can persuade a prince and soft speech can break bones. Do you like honey? Don't eat too much or it will make you sick. Don't visit your neighbors too often or you wear out your welcome. Telling lies about others is harmful as hitting them with an ax, wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. Putting confidence in an unreliable person in times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth or walking on a lame foot. Singing cheerful songs to a person with a heavy heart it's like taking someone's coat in cold weather or pouring vinegar in a wound. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads and the Lord will reward you. As surely as the north wind brings rain, so a gossiping tongue causes anger. It's better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. Good news from far away is like cold water to the thirsty. If the godly give in to the wicked, it's like polluting a fountain or muddying a spring. It's not good to eat too much honey. It's not good to seek honors for yourself. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. That was the reading of Proverbs chapter 25 from the New Living Translation. Now let's do our deep dive and I'll be sharing with you the verses that have jumped out for me and explaining as best as I can. Now the first verse that came for me was verse 4. It reads, remove the impurities from silver and the sterling will be ready for the silversmith, right? The Amplified Version reads, take away the dross, which is like the impurities, from the silver and there comes out the pure metal for a vessel for the silversmith to shape. Now in our lives as Christians, our silversmith is God. <laughs> He's the one who's shaping us and molding us and working with us, right? And here it clearly states that it's time for us to, we want to get somewhere. 
Now the first verse I'll be sharing is verse 4. It reads, remove the impurities from silver and the sterling will be ready for the silversmith. The amplified version reads, take away the dross from the silver and there comes out the pure metal for a vessel for the silversmith to shape. We're imperfect, that is true. God is not asking for perfect individuals. But here it's dealing with us being the silver, right? We're trying to be sterling silver. But Jesus is the one who's going to help us become sterling silver. But now as you work with Jesus and as you read the word of God, you will find that there's character traits that will pop up. Now how silver is purified is through heat, right? That is how you get it out. You don't like pick it off and dust it off and go, no, it's through heat. And remember that we are tested. Things are going to happen. Certain character traits are going to come out as being a negative. And you have an instant moment to decide whether you're going to continue being angry, being selfish. These character traits that God is saying, we need to get rid of this for you to become the pure silver, for me to shape you, for me to mold you into a worthy vessel. But before we get to molding you, sometimes we just want like God to work with us as we are. God, just take me as I am and make me a pastor, stand on a pulpit, just take me there and make me married uh, take me through with like without doing any work there's work that is required we need to take time to say lord search my heart show me that which needs to be removed right and god will show you right you're a little selfish you're a little mean you have unforgiveness you're quite jealous you do a lot of comparison now if you decide ah oh, that's who i am and you're keeping it you're like the silver keeping its dross and therefore avoiding being sterling silver at the end of the day. It's difficult to shape. It breaks when it now has the dross because the dross is causing, um, what do you call it, gaps in the pores when they're now trying to mold it. It needs to be pure. It needs to be pure for it to be sterling silver. But now it has impurities. It doesn't look as good. You can't just get there because you want to be there. You can desire to be sterling silver. Oh, beautiful. But there's work required. There's heat that has to happen to remove the impurities from us, the silver, so we may become sterling silver and be molded and shaped by the silversmith, our God, into worthy vessels. Verse 7 reads, It is better to wait for an invitation to the head table than to be sent away in public disgrace. The Amplified reads, For it's better than it be said to you, Come up here than for you to be placed lower in the presence of the prince. At times we find ourselves calling ourselves to certain places in life where God has not called us, wherever it is that is a level up or higher. Hanging out with certain people, calling yourself into marriage, calling yourself into motherhood, calling yourself into certain things, where God is like, wait, be humble. And remember, humility is not stupidity. At times we have to actually wait. This, if you find yourself going to the head table and nobody called you, that's a sign of pride. You're so proud. I'm supposed to be in VIP. Where's the VIP section? I want to be. Ma'am, we will demote you in public and everybody will see it. It says wait. Wait for an invitation. An invitation is something, it means space has been made for you. Yes, there's places in life where we say, yeah, make a space, do it yourself. Don't wait for anybody to call you. Yeah, there's places and times where these things apply. But here it is advising us to be wise enough to know I shouldn't be going there. I may need to wait for an invitation. I may need to wait to be called. Sometimes you're rushing to, to, to want to own a company. Or you're rushing to do certain things. And they say, wait for an invitation. When space is made for you, when there's a reservation, when something has been made for you, instead of you then being pushed down because there was no space for you or you do not qualify to be here, it says, wait. Better to wait. Verse 12 speaks on accepting what's it called? Constructive criticism. To one who listens, valid criticism is like a gold earring or other gold jewelry. Right. The amplified version reads, like an earring of gold, an ornament of fine gold is a wise reprover to an ear that listens and learns. Now, I love how it says valid criticism. We're going to have to take time to absorb the words that people have said and not be too quick to respond. So you actually have to listen and go, oh, okay, thank you. Then you're going to sit down and say, 
But this person, what they had to say, was that valid? Or that was just unnecessary. Now, once you've classified it, then you know what to do with it. Instead of rushing, someone has judged your weight or has criticized how you work or how you talk or how you work or how you dress or how you speak, everything. They've just come for something for you. Instead of you jumping to say, you know what? We, uh, 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 no, it actually says, listen, right? Yeah, listen, process. Now, for you to test the validity of something, you need a moment, you need time. So you don't have to be so quick to respond. You actually don't even really need to respond. It says just chill. So you're gonna wait and then look at it and say, okay, does this is this person right? Am I to this? Do I need to work on that? Am I lazy? Am I slow? Have I gained too much weight? No, no, this is my body, body positivity. You must know we are not, mm -mm. You're dressing too provocatively at church. Oh, my body, my choice. You know what? God sees me as it. Uh-uh. Was it valid? Did they have a point? Then at times you can actually say, that wasn't valid. I have no idea where they were coming from. And that's okay. That's not their problem. Great. But when you have sat down and asked yourself, was this valid? When you take the advice and learn from it, it says it's like a gold earring. It is precious. Valid criticism. And when it's applied, when it's listened to and applied, it's like jewelry. It is beneficial to the listener, not to the one who gave. No, no, no. Valid criticism doesn't bless the one who gave. Yes, they will be blessed. However, for the one who takes it and says, thank you, Lord, for correction. Thank you for serving. I mean, thank you for sending the right people around me and they're helping me. You find yourself doing better. It says it's like gold jewelry. Your value goes up. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit your value your net worth goes up when you accept valid criticism when you hear criticism realize it's valid apply it in your life you are better for it it is an increase of your wealth it's an increase of self because now you're better than you were yesterday if somebody comes to me in my dms and says yo me the way you're doing your problems love it however blah 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 I could be so quick and say, no, you don't understand. God called me. Instead of me going, oh, they have a point. Oh, okay. Could this improve? Hmm, I guess. Once I improve my work, it is better for my viewers. It's better for those who just click on any video. I am better for it. Now, please evaluate every form of criticism that comes. Don't be too quick to respond. Listen, evaluate, validate, and then learn and increase in value. Verse 21 and 22 are what my mother taught me and I plan to teach my children. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them water to drink. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads and the Lord will reward you. It is not easy to be kind to people that are not deserving of your kindness. After they've been mean to you, but here it says, if your enemies are hungry, give them food. It doesn't say go out of your way to look for enemies and start feeding them, no. It says, when you're faced with an opportunity to revenge or do good, choose good. It's not saying literally feed them, literally give them water. It's a point where you meet someone you don't like or someone who has been mean to you, has done you wrong. You've met them and now you have to make a choice between giving them what they deserve according to you or being kind. It says here, don't think your kindness is weakness. It's teaching us that your kindness is actually higher than you doing revenge towards them. It's like heaping burning coals of shame on their heads. I don't know if you've ever had a flat iron or a tongue burn you, but boy, it hurts. Now, I can only imagine what heaping hot coals on the head would be doing, right? That is the level the pain that is that's the extent it explains this to you that when you're kind it's like putting heaping burning coals on their heads of shame and it says in addition after you've been kind to people who are undeserving when you've gone out of your way to say you know what i could have been mean to you but i'm going to be nice it says the lord will reward you how amazing is that not only do they feel shame right You've done the right thing. You stopped the cycle of revenge. God then rewards you. And whenever you're faced with an option, 
to feed or to starve your enemies, when they've come before you and an opportunity has been presented to you, it's a test. What are you going to choose? Revenge or kindness? In closing, we're going to be reading verse 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. I have never really understood this verse. I would read it and go, mm. but then when I read a few commentaries, it says a city with broken walls is a vulnerable city. You're open to theft, attack, burning, everything. You're not protected. So it's saying a person without self-control your mind, your body, your mouth, your thinking, everything. Without self-control, you are vulnerable to attacks. Self-control is actually protection. Self-control is saying, I need to get home now before it gets dark. Or else you are left vulnerable to the things of the night. If you say, oh no, I, I shouldn't do that. But you know what? You've got no self-control. You are vulnerable to whatever happens there. The one with no self-control to say, nope, I will not be drinking alcohol. You've left yourself vulnerable to the alcohol abusing you. Remember, alcohol abuse is not you abusing a liquid. You could never abuse a liquid, I'm sorry. But it will abuse you, the drinker. Now, if you have no self-control, you're vulnerable to attack in any area of your life. If you've got anger issues, you are so vulnerable to attack. And the enemy can like sway you because you, you're a city without walls. People can run right through you. People can run and take whatever they want from you. And that's what they do. The enemy does that. They will come take what they want, live there, do whatever. And whenever you feel like people are taking advantage of you, you have no boundaries, you have no self-control. And that's something I had to learn. Personally, I realized I have no boundaries with people around me. And I was like, oh, that's why y'all just be walking through here like a public toilet. Uh-uh. Boundaries, self-control, these things will protect you. Now, if you don't know how to gain self-control, if you don't know what it is, it's time for you to do your research. It's time for you to read into the word of God. What does it look like? And by the way, self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Remember the fruits of the spirit in Galatians? Yes, self-control is one of those. And God, the Holy Spirit, will help you how to apply it, when to apply it. Because at times, you then do self-control, but then it's too tight. Then sometimes you don't do it well enough, then it's loose. The Holy Spirit will show you how and when to apply self-control best in your life. This marks the ending of our deep dive into the verses that have stood out for me. Thank you so much for joining me. Please tune in again for the next video, which is Proverbs chapter 26. I love you with the love of God. Bye.